Hey everyone, thank you guys so much for coming through tonight. The day is finally here. We have been watching Kanye West's Genius documentary for the past three weeks. We've been watching it together on the Discord and via the Rave app. And so a lot of folks have been in the streets talking about this doc. I think it surprised a lot of people. A lot of folks learned a lot of things about Kanye West that they did not know. So we're going to spend the next about two hours discussing the documentary, episode one, two, and three. And I have my special guest with me tonight. Um, her name is Lexi. Lexi, go ahead and unmute your microphone. Hey, everyone. I'm so excited to talk about Kanye. I stand Kanye. So if you come on the stage, be prepared <laughs> to argue with me about Kanye. <laughs> No, I'm happy to have you. And it was so funny why I wanted you to co-host because every time I would do the, uh, where I would air the genius episodes and I'll be just reading your comments. And I remember somebody was like, I'm not going to lie, but Kanye West was low key cute back then. And you was like, uh, uh-uh, you're not going to do Kanye like that because he's still fine. Girl, exactly. I fell out. <laughs> I, I fell try out. Play, always trying to play Kanye. Like he don't look good. Like he's not a beast. Like he's not the goat. So I'm here to defend Kanye and I'll also hold him accountable in the conversation. Exactly. And that's why we're here. So <laughs> the the first um episode was called The Vision. And I thought it was a really good opener into like introducing us to who Kanye West was, his life. And I think for me, I mean when I first heard the name Kanye it was kind of confusing. It's like, who's Kanye? Because I didn't know he had made all these beats and did all this stuff for Jay-Z. So I met him when most of the world met him when he dropped, you know, through the wire. And we fell in love with that. And one thing that I really respected about Ye even back then is that you realize that this dude is from the south side of Chicago, you know, one of like the most quote unquote violent cities in America. And he's rapping about something different. And it was really fresh for that time in hip hop because you know, that was around the same time that 50 Cent was out too. And it was all this, you know, hype about him being shot nine times and, you know, all this gang banging music and things like that. And then you had Kanye, who was kind of like a fresh breath to the industry. So how did you feel when you first were like kind of, or where were you at when you were introduced to Kanye West, I should say? Well, I was a baby. I was like eight years old and Christian parents, I was not listening to Kanye. So I probably got introduced to Kanye when I was in college and I started, you know, exploring my own music and stuff. Mm-hmm. So that, that's when I like fell in love with him and the whole dark twisted fantasy. And I had to actually go back and revisit those songs because I, I was there for the MTV days with, you know, all falls down. But I had to re- really revisit his um his music once I became a fan of his um during the dark twisted fantasy. Yeah, and I know uh, Carlos is saying in the chat, the Carlos is saying, um, it was conscious music without being boring, depressing, or chastising. Facts. And that's why a lot of us liked it. Like, even, like I said, one of the things that he has said in the All Falls Down song is that, you know, we're all self-conscious. I'm just the first to admit it. And I remember, like, those lines really hitting me. Because we do a lot of things subconsciously because we are looking for approval. We are low-key looking for for validation from other people. And to hear a rapper admit that, because so many times we hear rappers just being braggadocious. Like, yeah, I got 15 chains. They're all iced out. I got a big house in the Hamptons. And okay, but you have all that because you're self-conscious and you want to fit in. So it was really dope to hear an artist just admit that. And, you know, at the beginning of the documentary, we kind of saw a little bit of that because I think Kanye was kind of, you know, he had the grills in his mouth. He almost had like a a different accent almost at the beginning. And, you know, Mm -hmm. for him to, you know, stay true to himself, like this is a a son of an English professor, like his father was a marriage counselor, like he was raised in a really good environment. So, mm-hmm. you know, with someone who encouraged him, so for him to like break away and actually stay true to himself, I really admired that, you know, but, it, and it, and it's really hard to do, especially in the industry that he was in. 
Yeah, definitely. I mean, he comes from a background, like you said, you know, two parent household before his parents got divorced. And it wasn't like your typical story, like, oh, my dad was a crackhead and left the family. My mom was a struggling single mom who was on welfare. That wasn't his backstory. And I think that was really interesting because there's so many black people who are just regular everyday black folks. Everybody's parents weren't crackheads in the 80s and 90s. Everybody's, you know, daddy didn't leave a household destitute. So I think that was a you know, a breath of fresh air, because so many times, especially in hip hop, it's always the struggle. You know what I'm saying? It's always the struggle that's being pushed, the struggle parenting, the single parent household. And he's like, look, my mom had a good job. I lived in China when I was six years old. You know, I traveled the world with my mom. And, you know, he did a lot of things that weren't normal for a quote unquote rapper. And that's what I really loved about that, you know, is that his background was just so different. I think that that also played a role and why they try to play him like Rock Nation, it's almost like they were scared to give him shine because they just wanted him to be the beat maker. You know, just make us cool beats. You know, you'll get a check. Nobody's trying to hear that shit that you're talking about. And yeah. Kanye had enough, you know, confidence within himself. And, you know, like he said, why do people call it overconfidence? You should be very confident in yourself to know that what you're putting out there and the hard work that you're putting into somebody's going to vibe with it. Somebody's going to eventually like it. And I remember that scene when he crashed the Rock Nation offices and he's playing all this music and they're just brushing him off like, who gives a shit about this song? And then to think (laughs) that these songs end up being like Grammy nominated songs and they're, you know, they're a part of the lexicon to this day. You know, single black female still, you know, I'm addicted to retail. Like all of that isn't like the lexicon. So it was just really crazy to see like how they just literally brushed him aside. Like he was not going to be that guy. Exactly. And, you know, I feel like if Kanye wasn't who he was, like if his mother didn't raise him to be that overconfident, arrogant person that he is, he wouldn't have made it through that. You know, that that was a lot to deal with. He, he went through a lot. And I, the whole time I'm just like, man, they keep playing Kanye. They keep playing him. They, oh, you know, I want beats. Like, he, he, stick to the beats, you know, like all of this. And that's just so discouraging to hear every day. But he, like, he went through it. And it's only because of how he was raised that he was able to make it. Exactly. Um, Miss Paula Mitchell in the chat says he was the link between the backpacker that liked gangster music, but wasn't about to front because that wasn't him. Exactly. And it was very interesting, too, how even at the beginning of the documentary, that's one thing that we all noticed. His voice was so different. His accent was so different. Like, I forgot that that's how Kanye used to sound. And I don't know if his voice kind of changed, you know, once he had that accident, because it really messed up his jaw and everything had to be wired but I mean he sounded like a, like when he would talk he just sounded like a little gangster dude from the south side of Chicago yep so it was just really funny to just listen to like how much his his vernacular has changed over the years you know but um another thing too is that people had so little respect for him I remember the white dude kept calling him Cayenne you know so I wish you name again Cayenne and it's like, no, my name is Kanye, <laughs> you know? So it's like, they just wanted, it's like they kept trying to do little things to discourage them, to make them feel like, you're not that dude. Just stick to making beats. Stick to making everybody else hot. And he was like, no, you know, if I'm good enough to be rapping around Jay-Z, to be on the same level as a DJ Clue, I can do this. I can do this rap thing. So I just thought it was really dope how he invested in himself and he was sneaking into like MTV studios late at night. And he kept working and trying to finish his album you know even the behind the scenes with jamie fox when they were creating um that song together i just thought that was so dope i thought that was classic yeah, that was really cool and marvin gay that that's my song to this day <laughs> like, I love that song. <laughs> yeah it was really dope just to see how they put all that together and it's very interesting because it's like he went from you know, being the beat maker to really knowing like what worked and putting his own spin like on the music. And so when they came out with Slow Jams, like it was just a major hit. I mean, that song took off. And that was really for me, my first introduction to Jamie Foxx really being like knowing him as a singer. Like I knew him as a comedian. I never paid him any mind as a singer, even knew that he could sing. So then to see like the people that Kanye would hook up with and do music with was definitely different because nobody in the industry was doing collaborations with Jamie Foxx. 
Yeah, and I feel like, you know, Kanye has a way of bringing the best out of artists. I feel like a lot of the times when he when he works with different artists, like, it, it brings them to another level. Like, if you want a song with Kanye, that's a big deal. So I think he, he has a way of even, you know, helping other artists improve their craft. So I think he definitely helped Jamie out. He probably, you know, saw that little bit of potential and turned it into something great. So... Like, yeah, over- I, I believe that that's what probably even helped Jamie get that role of Ray. Yep. You know, playing that character of Ray. So we're going to go ahead and um, take in some calls. If you guys want to, you know, talk to us, talk about the Yeezy documentary, the Genius documentary, excuse me, um, raise your hand and I can let you on stage. So I'm going to start bringing people up. Make sure your phone is muted until um, I say. Yo, what's up? Baby, let's go. Hey, tea sippers! To listen to the rest of this podcast, please go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, Tuned In, or AnchorFM.com, which is a free podcasting site. Thank you guys so much for the support, and stay tuned for the next video. Yo, what's up?